Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Check out this new shirt. By the way, if you go over to Old Navy, they have I got like three different cool record themed shirts there. This is the latest one, I think it's cool. A revolution of sound. Anyway, they're like 15 bucks a piece. They're really, really cool. Highly recommended. Today though, we are gonna be talking about a record player. Now, have you guys been to Target and seen this line of products they have called Heyday? Well, I saw, I did a double take a few months ago. I saw they had a turntable, a Heyday branded turntable, and um, I could not find any information about who makes it, uh, about anything other than that it exists. So I really wanted to get my hands on one of these. Now they're only $100 and the price, you know, that's not bad. I mean, it's it's a reasonable price. I don't think you can get it on Amazon. Um, I think you have to get it through Target. And uh, But you know, $100, it looks cool. It's got a counterbalance. It's got a magnetic cartridge. Uh, the features look pretty cool. It was a full size, you know, substantial looking turntable. So I'm like, we need to give this thing, you know, a once over. So. Now I got mine in a little bit of a unique way. I actually picked mine up at Goodwill. So I saw that they had one over there. I think it was priced $50 and I talked them down like 10 or 15% on top of that. So it looked like it was in pretty good condition. It's a little scratched up, but it looks like it's been pretty much unused. Like somebody tried it and realized this just wasn't something they were interested in doing, or perhaps this was a little bit too much turntable for them. So I don't know. We're gonna take a look at it. I have peeked at it a little bit, but I had to, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Uh, but pretty much I've left it untouched and we're gonna give it a sound test as well. So you're not gonna wanna miss this. This is Recordology. Okay, so here we go guys, this is it. This is the Heyday wireless turntable from Target. And uh, it looks cool, I mean it looks pretty minimalistic. It's got kind of this gold metal trim and black look. Um, one set, it gives it uh, dimensions right there. Uh, if we turn it on its side here, we've got some basic information. Two speeds, 33 and 45, belt driven, RCA outputs. Uh, Bluetooth range, so it's got Bluetooth, connects wirelessly to Bluetooth speakers, removable dust cover. On the back it says, hey you, it's time to make your day. So take a minute to live out loud, to power up your look, and let your style speak volumes. You know, I think it's kind of weird how, um, and this is used by the way, I got this, like I said, at Target, or I got this at Goodwill. I think it's kind of weird how people talk about you know, obviously there's a design to a turntable, but the idea of electronics as fashion accessories is kind of bizarre to me, honestly. Uh, but anyway, okay, so here it is. Uh, like I said, I have had my hands in this a little bit. I, I had to, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Um, but this is essentially how it comes packed. Um, I believe there is a top carton piece that would have sat on top of this, uh, which I do not have. Um, here is a manual. Um, it's pretty small. Um, but I think it gives all the basic information. And the turntable's already in there. Um, I believe that when this was shipped that the platter was not on there, but I'll show you how it functions and whatnot. And then you've got uh, kind of a how-to quick start guide on top of there. So next thing we're gonna do is actually remove the turntable from the packaging, which is pretty easy. 45 adapters in there, power cord, which does detach, and that's about it. All right, so here's the turntable itself. Um, it's got kind of this like smoked uh, plastic uh, cover, which is nice. It's very 70s kind of looking vibe. One thing you'll notice right off the bat is it's really springy, um, and that's because it's got these very interesting feet. Um, it kind of looks like it's taken inspiration from like a uh, audiophile turntable, with these pointed um, feet, which are very springy, rubber tipped, and, and whatnot. Now let's take a minute, there's the logo right there. Let's take a minute to talk about the construction of what I see so far. So this, I feel like this is, uh, it was, I was gonna say fiberboard, but now I feel like that's plastic. Yet at the same time, I don't know. I think it's a combination of like fiberboard, laminated fiberboard and plastic. Um, Interesting. One thing I was curious about is who in the heck makes this thing? Uh, online, I couldn't find anything. I literally searched who makes heyday turntables for, for Target. Couldn't find any information until I actually got the unit in my hands and it says 
It's made by Intertech. Now, if you look up Intertech, you will find 500 companies operating under that name. So I still don't know much more than that. Obviously, this is a Chinese turntable, uh, but besides that, I don't know. Uh, Target Corporation, March of 2019. So this is a fairly recent build. Um, you know, looking through these grill holes right here, it's definitely uh, fiberboard, laminated fiberboard. And I don't know if that's a plastic laminate, which is kind of interesting. While we're back here, uh, the back panel, you've got your uh, RCA left and right stereo outputs. It does have a built-in preamp. Because it uses a magnetic cartridge, it has to have that preamp. So if you're using this and you have uh, powered speakers and you just want to plug right into them, you know, turn the preamp to on. If you don't and you want to use your own external preamp, then flip it to off. Uh, the choice is yours. And then over to the right, I'm going to pan over here, we have a simple AC uh, power plug, which is interesting. Uh, Jack, you don't see this type used very much. Panning further to the right, you will see the hinges, which look fairly standard, but they are squeaky. Very, And I don't know if this is just my unit or if they're all that way, but it is a little squeaky when you lift it. I don't know if a little bit of oil would fix that. Uh, but let's go ahead and look at the plinth itself. Okay, with the dust cover open now and the platter removed, you can see this is very simplistic. I kind of like how simple it is, actually. I feel like there's not a lot of pretense here. I feel like it just has what it needs and it functions and it does what it's supposed to do. So literally this is just more of that laminate uh, material. You've got your center spindle here. So the bearing seems okay. I mean, it doesn't, it's not like a U-turn bearing where you just like spin this thing and it goes for years. But I don't feel like there's any drag or anything. I feel similar to like the dual uh, in terms of the bearing. Um, it does have this little gap right here, which corresponds, I'll show you in a second, some teeth underneath the platter. I've been told that that really helps with uh, regulating the speed. I'm not sure how that works, if it's like an internal strobe thing. If you guys know, let me know. And then back here, we have a very typical looking uh, motor pulley. And I'm sure this is probably a JYK motor that we've been seeing a lot of recently. Um, now, before I talk about the tone arm, let's go ahead and put the platter together. Um, like we saw earlier, this is the quick start guide that was sitting on top of there. Um, the platter itself uh, is metal. Obviously, I'm not sure if it's steel or aluminum. One thing I did notice is this thing has a lot of scratches right there. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure if the previous owner just had a hard time lining up the platter when they were installing it. But uh, you can see the plastic teeth right there that fit into that groove for the speed check, speed consistency. Uh, I don't see any other markings on here really, but I feel like this is probably steel, but I'm not, it could be aluminum, but it's pretty heavy actually. And it literally just simply goes on just like that. Now obviously we need to put the belt on, but you know, it's pretty steady. I don't see any wobble really. It seems to be doing a good job. It's got an opening so you can, it, you can use it to align the uh, belt over the pulley right there. If you've uh, set up a turntable like this, it's not really difficult to do. So this inner rim right here is where the belt needs to be. So we simply take our belt. It's a flat rubber belt. Um, we're just gonna put the belt stretched around that inner rim like that. Then we're going to lay this on top. All we gotta do is find that belt with our finger and stretch it over the pulley. And it helps if it's not twisted. And you definitely don't want to twist it. And that's all there is to it, you guys. It does have a little bit of a raised edge here. So if you're using a rigid platter mat, like a acrylic one, that's probably not ideal because there, since it's not completely smooth flat across the edge and across the uh, very lip of the platter, uh, it could bow in slightly. So I'd recommend a flexible platter mat. In this case, we'll be using the uh, felt one that came with it. It's got sort of this uh, interesting, uh, uh, it's got the logo in there, the Heyday logo, but it's weird. It's like, I can't describe what this feels like. It's almost like it's been melted into it a little bit. But that's it for setup. Let's now, now let's take a look at the tone arm up close. So in the back here, we've got uh, a pretty simple but effective and somewhat professional looking counterbalance system. Uh, this just rotates in like any of these do. Basically, you just want to unclip this, rotate this uh, counterbalance until the tone arm floats in space. You don't want it going up or down on its own, just kind of floats off the rest very gently. 
Then you can move it back to the clip, rotate the outer disc until, not the inner, the actual outer disc alone until it's at zero. And then, now we know that that's calibrated to zero. That's a little bit more. Now that it's at zero, we can apply how much downforce we want. I'm going to go for 1.5 based on the cartridge we have in this. There's also anti-skate. Out of the box, set that to 1.5 as well. Whatever the value is here should match on the counter or on the anti-skate. Uh, you can go in and customize that further, which we've also demonstrated in the past. It's got a cueing lever here. Um, it's got a nice damping effect too, so the, the tone arm does descend gently. I did notice that this right here is a little bit loose. Um, you know, it rattles around a tiny bit. It's not as tight as I would like it to be. It's similar in that the movements up and down don't seem restrictive, but they do seem like they're not as fluid as I would like. So similar to the Marley, remember how it was kind of hard to set the counterbalance on the Marley? It seems very similar to this, where you can do it, but it just doesn't have that like super gliding smoothness uh, that a lot of turntables have. It's kind of clunky a little bit. I think it'll do the job. I don't think it's going to cause any damage, but something to be aware of anyway. Now, I said earlier that I did have my hands in this a little bit. You might have spotted it already, but this does have an Ortofon OM5E. That does not come standard, you guys, so don't expect that. Um, it's not a super expensive stylus uh, cartridge. It's a bit of an upgrade, but I really like the Ortofon products. Um, this was sort of my gateway Ortofon cartridge. Um, I believe this thing is like 50, maybe 70 bucks. Um, so it's not super expensive. It ships on a lot of, you know, kind of entry slash mid-range turntables. Anyway, um, I needed the, and this comes with an entry level Audio-Technica cartridge uh, that you see on so many units, a lot of the Crosley units. Um, it's a great, great cartridge. In fact, so great I needed it for another project. So I stole it off of this and put on my Ortofon OM5E, and that's why it has um, that's why it has this. Now, setting up the uh, cartridge was a little tricky because this head shell assembly is a little bit unique in that it does not come off right there. At least not that I found out so far how to do. And the wires come out there and they make a very sharp turn. Uh, to plug into the back. So it's a little bit of a stretch right there and kind of tricky to get that wiring plugged in. Luckily the back of the cartridge for the Ortofons is color coded so even I could figure it out. Um, but yeah, so be aware of that. It is uh, upgradable. Obviously you can see the head shell screws there. Um, but just be aware it can be a little tricky. Aligning this cartridge is a little bit tricky. Uh, but it works good. I did a very quick sound test to make sure that you know, I was getting sound out of it right because I inevitably wire these things backwards the first time and have to redo it. So, and continuing on with the theme of simplicity and function, we have a very simple switch for turning the unit on for 33, off, and then 45. Um, there is also the Bluetooth button so you can pair a Bluetooth device. We're not going to demonstrate that because, you know, we've done that a lot in the past and um, maybe we'll do it in the future, but it's more interesting from the standpoint of being an analog record player versus. Uh, Bluetooth, but we've reviewed a couple of them that do this, but not a lot of them transmit Bluetooth. So this is actually going to send Bluetooth audio to a set of speakers that can receive it, which is cool, but it's not going to give you that analog sound uh, that you might be accustomed to. Um, will you be able to tell the difference? Probably not. Uh, but for purists, if you really want analog sound, you want to plug into the back. Um, this switch right here seems like a little bit of an afterthought in its design. Uh, it's plastic. This kind of bezeled area seems kind of cheap. Uh, I don't feel like it's going to break or anything. It's got a good click to it. But, I don't know, this just slightly unimpressive in terms of design. The tone arm is metal. Um, the head shell, I can't tell if that's... That may be plastic, it's hard to tell. Um, the counterbalance is metal, the platter is metal. Uh, all of it's kind of painted this kind of bronze, kind of copper look, which I think looks good. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and give it a sound check now. Okay guys, we're gonna go ahead and give it a listen right now. I'm not gonna be doing a direct feed. Today I'm actually gonna be doing an ambient recording. Uh, so I'm gonna have a speaker off camera right by the microphone. So you can kind of get an idea for what I'm actually hearing in the room. Um, yeah, so let's give it a listen, you guys. This is the Heyday Turntable from Target.
Okay, you guys, and that's it. You know, from what I can hear, it sounds really good. It's full, it's rich. Um, I'm getting a little bit of a crackle. I did uh, wash this record pretty thoroughly beforehand, so possibly I just need to uh, do a stylus tip brushing, which I did not do, uh, full disclosure, before this recording. Um, however, you know, given that, I think it sounds good. It sounds full, it sounds rich. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I think this record player is a good starting point for somebody wanting a fully manual turntable. Um, and maybe this is where you start and stop. I mean, this is maybe fits the bill for you perfectly. Uh, you like the ability to stream Bluetooth, you know, to speakers, uh, along with the ability to plug this into some uh, external stereo equipment. So I think it does a good job. I mean, it's not bad um, by any means. It's a, it's a good unit. Very, very good. I would rate this above the Marley. Um, definitely, I feel like uh, it's a little bit more serious in terms of function over form. I feel like the Marley is so focused on the materials and the design that sometimes it neglects a little bit of the function. Whereas this definitely has a you know a very strong styling cue um, and design element, but at the same time, I believe like it's a record player that's designed to be played. So this is definitely, you know, a listening turntable. It's not a DJ turntable. This isn't one that's specifically designed to record audio from. Uh, this is a good record player for somebody just saying, hey, this is kind of a cool hobby. Maybe I should get this. Um, so based on everything that I've seen, I would recommend this unit, you guys. Very, very cool. Okay, guys, and there it is. That is the Heyday turntable from Target. Surprisingly good. Actually, I think it's pretty dang cool. And, uh, you know, I'd recommend this. This is a great turntable uh, to get started with you know the price a hundred dollars for a fully featured manual turntable not bad at all guys all right well thank you so much for being there i hope you guys are having a great fall i can't believe it's fall and we're going to be talking about christmas before you know it i'm looking forward to that so anyway happy record hunting you guys we'll see you next time thank you for watching recordology Stay tuned for a new show every Sunday and Wednesday. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check us out on Instagram and Twitter. So anyway, happy record hunting, guys. <laughs> happy record. I can't talk. Ah. Happy record hunting, you guys. We'll see you next time.